AB InBev is the biggest global brewer in the world and has been a huge part of the branded communications landscape for many decades. But in 2017, when the creative effectiveness of this global giant began to slip, a decision was made to get their house in order and build an entirely new way of operating. At the International Festival of Creativity in 2019, AB InBev CMOs Marcel Marcondes and Pedro Earp both spoke about the changes coming from within and the clear shift towards a startup mentality with their people very much at the core of everything they do. But how do you create a cultural change globally in one of the largest consumer companies in the world? And how do you then connect that internal culture with the external cultures of your customer? By exploring 67 years worth of our own data and drawing upon some of the most influential talks from the festival, as well as talking to experts from across our community, we're going to learn how to capture the hearts and minds of your people, customers, and how to craft and cultivate a truly creative culture. Having a creative culture means uh, to enable the teams uh, and uh, the agencies uh, to generate uh, a return on investment uh, that goes well beyond uh, the designated media budget uh, that was put in place. And uh, having the conviction that uh, creativity is a choice and it's not a choice uh, uh, based on creating work that is more interesting or more uh, entertaining uh, but work uh, that does a better job uh, in building brands. That was Cinzia Morelli Verhog, a leading expert in marketing and creative capabilities. She's worked with AB InBev to begin a sea change across their entire marketing organisation and one that replaces a test-to-death culture with a human-centric and people-first approach that really focuses on the enduring power of creativity. With the world in flux and as we all find our way through the COVID-19 pandemic, it's arguably the brands that double down on creativity and really focus on the long term that will last the course. AB InBev's creative journey is key to understanding how to get to a point of creative sustainability. And to begin that story, we need to go back to 2017 and meet the champions for creativity behind this change. Meet Jody Harris and Marcel Marcondes. We got to a point where we realized it was time for us to change uh, so that we could connect our brands to real consumer needs and help to shape culture once again like we did in the past. So we decided it was about time for us to change the mindset from coming to the office every day to defend our position to come to the office every day to lead. So how do you go about transforming the role of creativity within your business? Where do you even start? Is it all about the killer KPIs or getting to grips with your media mix? Well, if you take a leaf out of Chinzia's book, she'll tell you that strategy is a good place to start. You can expect uh, that creativity is all about execution. In reality, uh, creativity starts from uh, the strategy. Strategy is uh, fundamental, a strategy that drives uh, distinctiveness, and the first uh, step is uh, a distinctive brand purpose. We're all facing the same issue, right? Noise. There's a lot of noise out there. This is how a beer shelf looks like in the US. It's impossible for people to, to find their brand. It's impossible for you to stand out. The noise is not going to change. So we have to change. You have to work to find what we call the bright spot which is the intersection between what you stand for and what people care about, what they talk about. When you find that intersection, go, and then you need to go fast. We created a group called Culture and Learning, which has now evolved to Culture and Capabilities. Through that, we focus really on three core programs. Our marketing capabilities, we're really upskilling our teams with the tools and the resources and the skills that they need to become better marketers in a modern world. Creativity and creativity, I like to say, is our Trojan horse to begin to teach capabilities. And the last really is all around the culture. There's a whole, a whole program around inspiration through a series of spark sessions where we bring all of the marketing teams together on a monthly basis with an external speaker just to help learn and, and think about the creative capabilities that we need to build. And in fact, one of the, the tools that we use is, is called the Creative Spectrum. 
a scale of one to ten um, that helps us set um, the creative ambition for a campaign, but also allows us to talk in the same language on a global level. And what it's helping us do is actually build our acumen and, and our intuition for what great creativity needs to look like. In addition to establishing a culture of learning, building skill sets and introducing a shared language around creativity for the entire business, Jody and the culture and capabilities team provided yet another important function. I refer to Jody as my co-pilot. He uh, lovingly calls me his co-pilot. So it made a big difference for me uh, to have literally a co-pilot, somebody that was checking the instruments on a daily basis and that was really close to the people in a way that they could be comfortable enough to ask some questions and to share some doubts or vulnerabilities that they would not necessarily be comfortable to bring directly to me. And through that we were able to almost um, test and, and test and learn new routines um, without having to go through steer codes and, and have projects against them. We just kind of did it. Then you, you see people being more spontaneous. Then you see people bringing, bringing more ideas to the table. And then people become creative, they become authentic, they bring the, the best that they have to the work. And the more we can uh, uh, put fuel onto the fire and bring resources to bring these ideas to life, uh, the better things get. So Jody and Marcel were able to enact the first two core creative capabilities across their US teams. Number one, establish a creative culture. The second one is to make sure that uh, people are trained in uh, the right capabilities. But there was a third crucial step that was about looking outward rather than within. And it centered around partnership. The third one is about empowering the agency and letting them do what they are best at. The prerequisite of creative success is a trusted creative partner. You may have heard about the statement that clients get the creativity they deserve. The best examples of creative partnership is when People forget who is who and they are really uh, collaborating together uh, towards uh, the same creative ambition. We didn't have a strong enough relationship with our partners, with our agency. So we started to have some events uh, every year exactly to share. These are the things that we believe we're doing right. Those are the things that we believe we're doing wrong. And these are the five key things we believe we should get better at as a company. What do you guys think? They've created a sense of real partnership. They share the bad, they share the good. Uh, and they give us uh, sort of perspective and, and oversight of the totality of their business. You know, in terms of results, I think there's been a, a, a real shift over there to kind of look at what are the things that marketing can really impact. Um, and you know, there's a, been a huge shift towards earned media. But earned media isn't based on luck. And once the core capabilities are set in place, you also need to create new ways of working to make sure they're baked in to the entire fabric of the marketing function. And in this case, that means paying very close attention to culture. So we currently have a routine of a publisher. Every day we have a team that brings information about what's trending in the world. And then the brand teams have meetings to talk about whether or not these subjects that are trending have something to do with what the brand stands for. Whenever there is the intersection, they say, let's go, and then we're gonna go big. AB InBev went really big, and their internal transformation has been ambitious, to say the least. But have they hit a home run when it comes to the work? And has implementing these core creative capabilities really had any impact on their effectiveness? Let's explore that by taking a closer look at a baseball game from the 2019 World Series. A guy uh, uh, took a, a home run ball on the chest. He was holding two Bud Lights. He didn't uh, uh, let the Bud Lights go. He took the ball on the chest. It became a huge conversation. So they took to Twitter to find the man, Jeff Adams. They struck a deal with him, flew him to Houston the very next day, and in game six, he appeared on a Bud Light digital and TV spot, complete with his own T-shirt, of course. I was informed about it when it was already happening, right? This makes me proud because it feels like the system is working, the teams are empowered, they know what to do without me having to be there. Nowadays, I feel proud when something happens without me even getting involved. Empowerment, trust, 
and staying connected turned Jeff Adams into a Bud Light hero, driving 183,000 social mentions and over 242 million PR impressions. By having the courage to move quickly and back a moment in culture, rather than just plan, test and take the well-trodden path, AB exposed their teams to another realm of creative possibility. And it also happened to help them coin the now iconic US phrase, dilly dilly. It's amazing when you feel like you're becoming part of culture. Ben Roethlisberger called out dilly dilly. Dilly dilly! Dilly dilly! dilly. Have you seen the yeah. Bud Light commercial where they are bringing gifts to the king? And every time they bring Bud Light, they think... When Dilly Dilly started popping up, mostly in like sports radio and sports coverage, we were like, oh, we think, we think there's something there. What was really great, it was painful at the time, but what was really great was we had these two big Super Bowl plans, and Marcel comes in, he's like, we gotta do Dilly Dilly. And he's like, let's start over and, and go all in on that. At the Super Bowl, there's people wearing like Etsy made Dilly Dilly shirts, like bootleg Dilly Dilly gear. I remember calling Deal, be like, this is crazy down here. <laughs> this is like a real thing. As far as the usual rigor they were putting into things, it wasn't the best testing piece of work. It wasn't something that, that scored dramatically well. Those were all based on just the feeling that this ridiculous phrase was something that people liked in the real world. Dilly Dilly earned Bud Light market share growth for the first time in over a year. And Morgan and Stanley cited the Dilly Dilly effect as the reason AB InBev gained share for the first time in seven years, positioning creativity as a key driver for success. And something tangible that can and must be measured. Between 2015 and 17, AB InBev had won just two Lions and ranked 27th in the Can Lions Global Creativity Report under Most Creative Brand. Since shaking up their creative culture, AB have picked up 14 Lions over the past two years and used their new creative capabilities to raise the bar, climb the rankings and have peaked at seventh place. But what about internal success? Well, in 2019, they reached an all-time high with their employee engagement score, as well as becoming the market leader in share of social conversation. And when it comes to effectiveness, well, Marcel has introduced five core KPIs in order to track their ongoing progress. So we have specific targets on the amount of consumers that we talk to on a monthly basis to make sure that, we, that we're going to, to talk to more people in a deeper way as an organization. When you talk about our portfolio of brands, it's all about share by segment. On innovation, we're starting to track now not only volume, but also share of innovation, because we want to check whether or not we're driving leadership. When we talk about uh, creativity, we're moving from tracking share of voice, which is the amount of airtime that you buy, to tracking share of social conversation, which is exactly how relevant you are to people. And then, last but not least, on, on, on our marketing culture and capabilities team, we track all the touch points we have with the team in, in terms of inspirational sessions and especially engagement. How engaged is our team? Because one thing is the consequence of the other, right? Engaged teams deliver better results for sure. We started to see uh, this, this ball of energy just emerge from, from the U.S. market. We realized that this needs to be global in nature and global at scale. Going global, AB InBev's next challenge. In the U.S., introducing core creative capabilities saw Jody and Marcel create a renewed purpose for their brands, construct an entirely new team dedicated to growing the creative capabilities of their people, and strengthening partnerships with their agencies, all with impressive results and an extraordinary effect on their creative output. But how do you replicate this kind of transformation? And how do you take the learnings and roll it out across different cultures in order to strengthen the roots of your local brands? AB InBev's Global Chief Marketing Officer and Head of their Innovation and Ventures Wing understands that in order to replicate Jody and Marcel's success around the world, you need to get flexible. For us, creativity is all about finding original solutions for problems. And we really have to ask ourselves whenever we take a look at a problem, if that's a global human need, right? Uh, or if it's that more of a 
local insight or a local uh, need. And in, in the ones that are global, you know, usually we try to come up with a global solution to leverage the scale. Of course, leaving a lot of freedom for the countries to adapt and then really giving the freedom to people to find local insights and local consumer problems that they can go there and solve uh, at a local market. For the global brands, you know, that have global consumer needs that we're trying to address, we of course allow a lot of flexibility for the local markets that have some nuances uh, and really have to appeal to local consumers to, to be adapted. And then the, our local brands they are truly local and we make sure that we have the best product that can serve local needs. Here's an example of the flexibility and shared learnings at scale that Pedro talks about. Very recently, one of AB InBev's local brands in Uganda developed a new production model that helped sustain local farmers. The practice was quickly picked up by other brands around the world, who then went on to help their own local farming communities. We've been able to develop outposts of culture and capabilities in each of our core and core regions and uh, really follow that same model where uh, we are the co-pilot to the local vice president of marketing or the local CMO um, and really driving that culture change by, by really focusing on building a winning team that delivers winning work and ultimately to deliver winning brands. Clearly, creativity is a journey. Moving from uh, uh, a, a moderate level of uh, creativity to an outstanding level of creativity takes uh, a, a few steps, uh, and I think uh, Abi Imbev is really making it possible uh, to evolve uh, uh, in a very limited uh, period of time uh, into a company recognized uh, for their outstanding uh, creative caliber. And over the last few years, they've started to really lean into the idea that, that building a brand nowadays is super iterative, that you have to be building the plane in the sky the whole time. At first, I think everyone was uneasy with that, and now I think it's almost table stakes. So what have we learned? It all starts with strategy. Dive in and define your brand purpose. Build the tools and capabilities your teams need to make it a part of your culture. As Chinzia says, decide on and back creativity. Create alignment across the business and introduce a universal language that will allow you to set the benchmark and describe what great looks like. Be flexible and trust your people and partners. Once you empower your teams with new creative capabilities, give them the freedom to act quickly, respond to and enter culture and balance science with cultural cues and instinct. Measurement. Create a matrix of data points across the effectiveness of your work, its relevance in culture, and your status as a leader in innovation, share a voice, or something else that's critical to your positioning. And then tie it all back to internal metrics and ones that are important to your culture, like employee engagement. By introducing a culture of continuous improvement and learning, they've established AB InBev as a creative powerhouse. Something that they're using to address a very real and relevant problem that affects us all. AB have responded to the COVID-19 pandemic with speed, generosity, and of course, creativity in abundance. They're walking the walk, going to the heart of their brand purpose, and shifting funds in order to turn beer into hand sanitizer for local hospitals. As Marcel says, when they go, they go big. Backing creativity and the long term takes guts and a level of bravery that stems from strong guiding principles and a team that is constantly pushing for more and asking what's next. But there's another ingredient that Marcel and the team absolutely swear by. We are learning to have fun. We do beer, right? We build brands that are present in people's lives when they are celebrating. But because we are owners and because we drive a business, we face tension, pressure, fear, and we must create an environment so that we can enjoy what we do, so that we can have fun doing what we do. This is very important because this gets into the work. It's only worth it if you can enjoy it.